Paradise in his first game. Oh, shit. Yeah. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Soccer Comic Rant. And this is a midweek show, but we got a lot to talk about. Sam Allardyce is back. Back in the Premier League for four games. A limited run. So we're going <laughs> to see what the deal is with that. Man United robbed today. Uh, I will get into it, but I'm pissed at the result at Brentford. Uh, Man City responds, takes the lead of the Premier League, and then Arsenal responds and retakes the lead of the Premier League. We're going to go out of the Premier League. We're going to go to Napoli. I just want to mention that and just, you know, give them their props for winning uh, the uh, Serie A after not winning it since Maradona played for them. And uh, Liverpool get five in a row. And uh, Leicester and Everton, they, for, for two teams in trouble, they gave us a, a kind of a classic match. And, uh, you know, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Leave a rating on Omni Studio, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening. And uh, comment on YouTube. And if I don't respond, one of these guys will respond or one of the other people commenting will respond. But And I need to respond more, so I apologize for that. Also went to LAFC uh, CONCACAF Championship semifinal game, uh, Champions League semifinal game. So talk a little bit about that. And uh, LAFC through to the final. And they won 3-0. They beat Philly. And uh, we'll, we'll think of anything else. Uh, but uh, thanks for listening. We got Lee Hudson, stand-up comic from England, joining us. Southampton fan. He ain't wearing his shirt. I ain't wearing my shirt. What's up? <laughs> I'm the soon-to-be soccer comic rant championship correspondent. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is uh, yeah. This is just just these last last few weeks of Premier League football for me, and then I'm <laughs> I'm I'm down there. Uh, <laughs> but I'm all good. <laughs> How do you go about that? Do you even, uh, are you, now that you've resigned to your, your elimination, your, your, uh, your, you're being deported, like, <laughs> how do you feel? I mean, I've, I've, I've been accepting it for a few weeks. There was little glimmers of hope that tried to, you know, get my spirits up, but, um, yeah, I've been accepting it for a little while. So it's, and, and, and the fact that we've not really fought it that much, like mm-hmm. I say, we showed little flashes of hope, but it's been fairly easy to accept. I've been through this before. I've been all the way down to League One with this football club. Um, mm-hmm. I still went, to, I still went to the games. We were mm-hmm. in, in administration. We were, you know, the club was going bust. Um, we were playing teenagers. Like I've, I've seen the depth. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm 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 ready for this. I'm ready for the adventure. Hopefully, it's a one season adventure because um, mm-hmm. it's the, the, the championship could be fun if you do it well. Like, I'm sure Burnley fans had fun this season, watching uh-huh. their team win, actually win games, play good football, dominate a league, um, and then they got it for one season and they're back. That's what you want to do if you're going to go down. They did it right. They got they got the maximum enjoyment out of it. What isn't enjoyable is if you go down and you stay down. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and you just become a championship team. That's uh, that's the one that sucks. So, yeah, we want to avoid that. We want to do what Fulham and Bournemouth have done where they've gone down and come back up as well, um, try and get on that business. So, yeah, it's uh, it's fun times, but, you know, there's plenty uh, plenty of better football to talk about this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to trampoline back up into the Premier League a better team. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, like you said, Burnley is one example because not only did they trampoline back up, but they come back with a better style of play and maybe even a better, I'm not, I don't know if he's a better coach yet, but they're more attractive and they may, may have a better chance of like staying up, you know, mm-hmm. so that's, that's good for Burnley. Uh, speaking of like, let's go to the top of the table, I guess. Um, we'll talk about it before. That I just want to say I'm in Austin right now for shows at the Mothership. So if you're out here, pull up. I'm here from May 5th through the 7th. And I got some shows also in uh, Zany, Chicago, May 18th through the 20th. I'm in La Jolla from the 
I'm trying to go off the top of the dome, but I, I, I know I'm not that good. So why am I even trying? <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, I'm bad at promoting it, much less remembering the shit that I'm promoting. So let me just, <laughs> let me just like be disciplined and read. San Diego La Jolla Comedy Store, May 12th through May 14th. Zany Chicago, uh, May 18th through the 20th. And then Zany's Nashville, that's Sunday, May 21st. So those are my bookings. You got anything you want to plug? Before we continue. I uh, know not at the moment. Head to my Instagram if you want to see uh, where my shows are at this month. If there's any UK listeners, I'm all over the place. I'm in, in the Midlands, I'm in the South. Um, going to do some stuff up in Liverpool, Manchester in June as well. So, yeah, I'll be everywhere. Yeah, Lee got a long list of dates on his gram. So, check <laughs> it out. He's trying to keep his mind off Southampton, and uh, schedule is going to actually help. So, good. <laughs> It's almost like you saw this coming and you was like, let me book myself. Let me occupy my <laughs> mind with shows. And, you know, so that's good. Uh, so, yeah. So I guess midweek Man City played, who did they play? They West played Ham. West Ham. And uh, I got to give West Ham props. They put up a good fight in the first half, even though... Mm. City had some good, clear chances. And I, I think the game changed, even though the guy that filled in for, for Grealish, not for Grealish, for Declan Rice, fouled Grealish and Southampton, uh, not Southampton, Man City got a free kick and uh, Nathan Ake put the ball in the net. So Man City went up one nothing, but if, yeah, which is fine because Man City is always going to attack, especially a team like West Ham. So you still have your chances to counter, which West Ham were creating some decent counter chances the entire game, even up until that point. And even after that point, they were. And uh, during the game, one of the things I was looking at, I was like, damn, Luis, like uh, uh, Paqueta started heating up for West Ham and really started like showing like stuff out of his skill closet and he was linking up with Antonio and I was just remarking at how good Antonio was on the ball and holding up the ball for West Ham so that they could actually start attacking Man City when guess what Moyes does he subs him and I believe the only reason why he subbed him is because sometimes I listen to sports talk and the fans get angry at coaches like Moyes specifically and other coaches when they're down and they don't make subs. Sometimes the fans want you to just do something and look positive. So he subs out Antonio, who's having a pretty good game, even though there's no goal. I mean, Man City only has one and they're the best team on the pitch. And, you know, West Ham has created some chances. So they sub out Antonio, who's doing a great job, like I said, of holding up the ball just to sub him out. And they put in Danny Ings. And it was either Danny Ings' first touch or second touch that he gives away the ball to Man City. And three touches later, Haaland breaks the <laughs> Premier League scoring record because David Moyes made a sub for no reason. This wasn't the problem with your team that day and you subbed. And that's from then on, it went up to three nothing. And to me, that's where West Ham went wrong because they were hanging in there. They were in range. There's plenty of time left. There's no need to panic. And your players are doing the best they can against the champions. So just chill for a minute and let's see if your boys can do something. Uh, I, I, what are your thoughts on this game? Um, yeah, like you say, like it was a it was a spirited effort from uh, from West Ham to to stay in the game in the first half, and they had a chance as well. I think it was Bowen when he broke in the side of the box, and Ortega in goal made a good save for for City. Um, and yeah, like they, they, you know, they were in the game. Like you say, City were on top; they're always going to be. It's that's how it is when you play City. But the fact that they were staying in the game was yeah. It was admirable. And then with Antonio, I'm never sure if, because he's had a lot of injury problems. I don't know if he he's just not able to last the full 90 minutes, especially 
a 90 minutes where you're going to have to work as hard as you have to work against Man City. Um, so it might be that he just hit the wall and then, you know, they, they thought Ings would be some fresh legs to come on. But yeah, um, it is what it is against City. They're going to grind you down. They're going to find those chances. And like you say, Ake off the set piece. Haaland, lovely little finish for the goal that broke the record. Um, and then Foden, you know, he hit the ball well. He got a bit of luck with the deflection. Uh, Fabianski mm-hmm. was probably saving that otherwise. But yeah, it's gone in. And is still looking lively for City as well. Um, I I don't really know where they're going to drop these points that Arsenal need them to. Um, <laughs> like I say, I'm I'm still I'm still rooting for Arsenal. I want Arsenal to win the league, but City, you know, they're in they're in a great position now. And I think you know at this stage of the season when they've got your their foot on your neck, it's going to be hard to it's going to be hard to come off that because it's they're just they're just on it like they're they're relentless. Why are you rooting for Arsenal, by the way? Just because. I think City are, you know, like I say, financially doping. Um, mm-hmm. Said it before, you know, it's, it's just boring watching them. Like, they play great football. They're great to watch, but it's boring having them just buy their way to the league title mm-hmm. uh, multiple times in a row. So, I, I, you know, Arsenal not won it for a long time. I know a bunch of Arsenal fans. Um, and, you know, they've they've seen their club sort of go through a cycle where they've had to rebuild. And uh, I like what Arteta does. Um, I like the way they play. I like their players. Um, you know, I think for players like Saka um, and Odegaard, who's had a great season as well. Even Jacker, like Jacker's come alive this season. He's looked a different player. Um, I kind of, I want to see those guys rewarded for that. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, if City, if City are the ones who finish on top, they're the ones who deserve to finish on top. So that's the only way I can see it happening right now that they've got themselves into this position. Um, losing that game against... City the other week has, I think, just finished Arsenal off. Really, like they're gonna, they've been spirited. They've come back and won some games, but uh, I think that was the one that decided it. They only won one game, but one thing you mentioned about Ortega before we even get to that was like that that Ortega did a great stand-in job for for uh, you know because he he was in there for City's keeper, right? But Anderson. Edison, yeah. Edison played Edison. the last game against uh, Fulham, but then Ortega came in for this one. Yeah, he, he did a pretty good job. It was pretty, I, I couldn't, mm. they, they didn't really skip a beat, so that's good, you know. Uh, so Arsenal's game this week was against Chelsea. Like, and it, like Chelsea's just like a pillow. Like, <laughs> you, you know, you're playing a pillow. You're just like, All right, I, I can fold this pillow any way I want to. And do anything I want. I can put it between my legs. I can lay on the head. I can put it on my back. I can fold it in two and make it double fluffy and really prop my head up. I can do anything with with Chelsea. And that's what Arsenal did, especially in the first half of this game. They went up three nothing before Chelsea even acknowledged that they were actually in a game that they had a stadium full of people that they were playing in and that there was cameras on a TV or or that you know. And, and it, it, it's just tough watching. Frank Lampard on the sideline not being able to do anything. It's like, it's not even fun. You know what I mean? It's just like, it just looks pathetic and his arms are folded and his hair is balled in and he's trying to dye the ball patch in the back and it's just aging right before our face. And it's like, this legend. And it's like, Jesus, like, how is he going to revive this this will be the greatest comeback story every ever coaches anywhere else ever again and is a success and uh you know maybe sometimes shit like this has to happen to you for you know for you to go on to like further greatness in life after football who knows but this is these results are damaging this is six losses in a row or five oh yeah like six that. six losses Going Hilarious. for seven this weekend. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it's it's pretty embarrassing. They got one goal back. But again, speaking of subs, you like, he's subbing almost because you have to look like you're doing something. And the subs again, maybe Neil's not here to make sense of these subs to me, but they didn't make any sense. It's just like, all right, let me throw in these two guys, this guy, because you, and you were taken off, like your goal scorer, who was your 
most aggressive player all game. And I don't know for what. Abamyang, you just pulled half time. It's not Abamyang's fault. He only got five touches in the first half. You the rest of the team didn't get him the ball. He can't, you know, like do it all himself. So just to like pull him like that, like just putting all this blame on Abamyang. So it's it's just it's shambles FC, man. That's what Chelsea is right now. Deep, deep problems. Yeah, man. What do you think of what was going on in the game or just about Chelsea, period, now? I mean, it's fun to laugh at Lampard, but it goes beyond him. Um, you know, the board have got a lot to answer for um, in terms of the mismanagement of the club, but hiring Lampard's part of that, I mean, it's a dreadful sort of logic that they've used to bring him in um, yes, kind of thing. It's like just like make a decision. Oh, we're going to let Potter go in the summer and just let him have the job until then because he wasn't like. I mean, he was he wasn't doing obviously the best job, but the team was still trying. The team hadn't like given up under him. Mm -hmm. Like they were still they beat Dortmund in the Champions League. Um, mm -hmm. He didn't even get a chance to face uh, uh, mm -hmm. to face Real, and um, you know he's not a terrible coach, and I don't think he could have obviously done any worse. Um, than they've been doing under Lampard. So just let him see it out till the season, but then say, you know, we're going to we're gonna part ways at the end of the season. We want to go in a different direction. Um, I think that might be more healthy than what they're doing right now because they've just become, uh, I mean, they were getting that way under Potter anyway, but they've been a real laughing stock right now. Like they're a meme. Chelsea are a meme right now. <laughs> they're not even a football club. They're a meme. It's, um, you know, it's not a position you want to be in. You know, I'm, I'm a Southampton fan and I feel sorry for Chelsea. Um, <laughs> but that's... that's funny. You're going down and you feel <laughs> sorry for Chelsea. <laughs> that's bad, bro. Yeah. It's, yeah, man, it's, you know, it's it's not good. Um, it's it's, And they're still not even out of the woods relegation-wise. I mean, it would take a crazy sequence of results for them okay. to go down. But the fact that they haven't even hit the 40-point mark with like four games to go is embarrassing. That's... Um, I think this might be, but I think, I you, think that this is their worst run of games in the top flight, like ever. Um, are, they, are they in worse form than Southampton? If, they, if you took the results from a certain point, I think yeah. you guys have gotten more points and you're definitely still going down yeah. for a long, yeah, like, for a long time. Yeah. I mean, we went to the Emirates and got a draw off Arsenal. We could have won that yeah. game. We weren't three nil down at half time. I, it's um Hilarious. yeah it's 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 just not looking good for them it's um and a similar thing with like some of the Southampton games like it, it's just alarming when you see your team just roll over and play with a lack of fight and a lack of heart um mm -hmm. and that Chelsea team just doesn't seem to care right now like in spells they do but there's just some real like mental weakness there with how they can see goals and how they can see them so frequently um and it's not necessarily even tactics per se like when when Arsenal was scoring those goals there were a lot of Chelsea players back like they had loads of bodies it wasn't like they got fully opened up it's those players were just there but they were only there like in spirit <laughs> um, they weren't <laughs> tracking their player or putting their bodies on the line um, or even if they were there wasn't enough of them like the uh, the final goal like Xhaka tried to get a shot off and two players dived in and the ball's just fallen to Jesus and he's like oh no I'll put it in instead yeah, um, yeah. And there's just a trail of bodies. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's always alarming when a team are just conceding that amount of goals that quickly in a game. Um, you know, I've seen it with obviously Spurs recently, but they still managed to turn that around against Liverpool and almost get something um, yeah. at the weekend. At least, so, but, at, least, at least Spurs puts up a fight in the second half, which Chelsea did and they got one back. Yeah. But just... Just to tag on to what you're saying, uh, what was I going to say? Like, uh, it. So, you know who we should be laughing at? The fans. Not all of the Chelsea fans, but those specific ones that were so pissed at Potter that they wanted him fired and forced Todd Bowley into trying to people please them by getting rid of, of 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 uh of potter and hiring frank it's like fans sometimes just chill you know what i'm saying just chill sometimes now 
it, they pay the they get money out of their salary to have Potter back because their XG was higher with Potter. They were in games with Potter. And some of the losses, a lot of the losses with Potter was just like, they just lost by this much. Like it's like some type of luck, a deflected shot or somebody hit a worldy and they'd lose by one nothing or they'd have some draws. And it wasn't the results, but the Chelsea fans are so spoiled. There's like, and, and because of the history of Chelsea under Abramovich, which was like, if you're not performing and the results ain't in, just off put his head. But uh, here's the other thing that Chelsea fans ain't looking at. Like you're mourning Tuchel, but like Tuchel ain't doing the greatest at Bayern either right now. You know, like he has a losing record and he wasn't fired because he was winning at Chelsea. So you're mourning Tuchel and you hate Potter because of Tuchel. And so Potter doesn't get the wins that a normal Chelsea coach would say you ask for his execution and then they put uh, 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 what do they call him when, um, when America takes over a country and puts a prop dictator in the, the, the old yeah. dictator's position and, <laughs> and now you have a banana republic of a team so good luck Chelsea fans this is see, sometimes fans need to chill and this is a great example because there was now, now this season is just going to be painful game by game. Uh, after the Arsenal win, uh, Man City had to respond, and they uh, did we talk about this? Am I confused? Yeah, 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 yeah. City West Ham, City West Ham, yeah, yeah. So, but so, but so Arsenal's back in the lead, and one more thing just about the Chelsea game, like. Like you said, like the, the Chelsea players did get back, but they were two unorthodox crosses, it, like through the lines, sideways. That no, when you normally when you're passing through the lines, it's like, it's what is that vertical? Like if you're going from one end of the field to the next, what is yeah, that yeah, vertical? Yeah, yeah. But Xhaka had two horizontal through the line passes on the ground that are not traditional, that were pretty abnormal that work and both of those passes were to Odengard who one time both of them in either side of the net so th th those those were some special things that happened and then uh, like you said the last goal like there were three Chelsea players on the ground and when you have no heart already and those things happen it just breaks you in an irreparable way that you're not going to be able to come back and recover because you've been defeated so much all season you're like, yeah. So, yeah, that, that happened in that game. Uh, I guess we can go to Man United today. We played Brighton. And, you know, we're terrible on the road. And we're playing Brighton, the team we beat by in a penalty shootout in the FA Cup. They're definitely going to want revenge. They beat us at the beginning of the season <laughs> at our home. So they're Full of confidence, they should be full of confidence based on where they're at the table. They're fighting for Europe spot, and we're ahead of them. So this was always going to be tough, and uh, we, we 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 hung in there. And I didn't get to see the game a lot because I was traveling. And then when I logged into the game, normally my computer and uh, what do they call it? The, the DVR is supposed to save every Man United game so I can play it from the beginning. I get to the hotel. It only is allowing me to watch the game from the point that I joined it. So that was infuriating because I want to see the whole thing to give a full report. So this ain't my fault, y'all. But uh, <laughs> I, I saw us hanging on and I saw us being a stretch a little bit because we are still trying to get the goal. So it created some opportunities. But what I did definitely see was Luke Shaw get a yellow card for a foul that he did not commit. And the sequence of the free kick after that, that led to the corner from the free kick that should have been given, which ended up in Luke Shaw hands, balling the ball, 
when he was one of the best players of the game based on like vlogs I've listened to after. And then, of course, De Gea hasn't been great saving penalties. And McAllister, come up, he's five for five. The season so far is probably six for six now. And uh, Brian Hove get their revenge on their the team that made them exit the FA Cup semifinals at Wembley. And uh, Man United lose and je- top four is in jeopardy. But uh, we'll see if we can hang on and continue to, you know, to, to hang on to it. Liverpool's behind us, you know, Brighton's behind us. It's like, this is not said and done. You know, this is, uh, it'd be crazy for Liverpool after all they've been through to come back and catch us. It's pretty embarrassing. Okay. We have a game in hand and they're four points behind us. So we need to, to win out. But today, kind of stunk. It's not a, not not a fan of this result. I was going to ask you a, a question. Do you think the fact that uh, Man City has seven games in the same period of time that Arsenal has four games? I think yeah, four games. Yeah. You think the extra games? might cause not specifically an opponent in those seven games but the attrition of the seven games will cause a slip up from man city i mean possibly um they've got the squad depth to kind of ride it out like they're not Mm -hmm. like um like an arsenal where saliba gets injured and they have rob holding in there fucking Mm -hmm. things up um, oh. You know, at City, like if uh, if Stones gets injured, they got Laporte or Diaz. Mm-hmm. Um, they got a Kanji, they got Ake. Like they, they're just, it's such a deep squad. Yeah. Um, like it's just crazy. Like they haven't had De Bruyne in the last two games because um, yeah. he's he's had a muscle injury and they won both games. Um, and, you know, if Harlan doesn't play, I mean, he was playing against Fulham, but they had Alvarez on the field and he just stepped up and, took the ball and put it top corner against Fulham. Um, so they know that they've got, they've got a World Cup winner who can come in and score goals for them. Um, and, you know, Mares is on it. Grealish is on it. Foden came on or Foden was on and scored the other night. So I think they've got the depth to be able to deal with it. I don't know mentally it might take its toll just because they're, they're big, big games. Every game has pressure on them, especially those Champions League uh, semifinals against Real Madrid coming up. I think they're going to take a lot of energy. Um, but you know, I think they've got the depth to deal with it, and I think they can even they can even afford to to lose a game in the Premier League. If they lose a right. game, they're still one they're still one point ahead of Arsenal because they're one point ahead of them right now, and they've right. played one less game, so they can afford to even drop a game. Um, so they've got five games left in the league, mm-hmm. um, and they've got obviously two legs against Real Madrid. They got cup final against you guys, maybe a Champions League final if they get past Real Madrid as well. So. Yeah, it's it's a lot of games. It's a lot of pressure, but you know, they, I think they've got big game players who can deal with that mentally, and also the depth of the squad as well, and the fact that they can afford to lose a game. So I, th- I think they'll be fine. It's going to be a tough run for them. Pep will probably moan about it, um, <laughs> but it's the cost of being Born successful. About the position that he got his team in. Yeah, it's the cost of being successful, and you know, when you're spending as much money as they've done over the years and assembled the squad they've assembled, they should be planning to deal with that because it's part and parcel of uh, of this part of the season if you're if you're a good team and you're in those competitions but I, th- I think they'll be fine right yeah I wonder you, you, you know seven games in the same amount of time we'll see I wonder how would it affect them and the only way to find out is get to the end of it and see how it does uh Liverpool beat Fulham one nothing. I think that so Liverpool's are won five in a row or something like that. Yeah, a decent little bit of form from them. Yeah, and they're catching up. They're, you know, they they get into a respectable part of the table, and they're not like being inconsistent where they win one and lose one, uh, and then lose another one and then tie and then win one. Like 
they've done this full turn. But the thing that impressed me about this one nothing Liverpool win is that they didn't concede because the Jekyll and Hyde Liverpool, even when they win, they concede and they yeah. did not concede. So this that's what worries me about like a clean sheet, like lets me know Liverpool is getting back <laughs> on track. Like you didn't, you like, you know, because you can't point to Trent Alexander-Arnold or anybody in their defense, like, like uh, Van Dyke or anybody of the usual suspects for this season messing up. So uh, it's going to be interesting to watch how strong Liverpool finishes this season. That, that it took me a minute to be, start believing in them again, but I think it's about that time, but maybe they'll surprise us <laughs> and take that belief back. Yeah. They're looking, uh, yeah, they're looking, looking better. Um, Fulham made them work for that game as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Allison had to pull off a couple of big saves. Yeah, um, you know they they they, they made them, and even without Mitrovic that was as well still. So um, no, they they they're a tough team for them, and a win against them and a clean sheet, like you say, that's worth it's worth their weight in gold. Mm-hmm. Calm penalty from Salah. Um, they created some other good chances as well. So yeah, it was a solid win for them. But I th- I think you'll you'll have enough to stay above them. Hopefully, yeah. I, I hope you're right on this one. I'm. I'm... I'm rooting for what you just said. Uh, <laughs> so Leicester versus Everton, right? You're an ex-goalkeeper. And it's funny, like I saw the penalty. I saw, you know, uh, Pickford go drink some water before the penalty. And I thought, it's, oh, it's a stall tactics. But then later on, they zoom in on the bottle and they show the penalty stats for, I think it was Madison. And uh, afterwards I'd heard some talk sports pundits talk about, it's kind of like, there's something wrong that he has this information right there. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with it, but I guess, guess yeah. it is jarring when you see, the, when they zoom in on the bottle, you can see it right there. <laughs> like it's it was huge like I, is this Pickford is something wrong with his eyes he could have had it smaller <laughs> or, or just have it on a piece of paper that he could eat like Mission Impossible right <laughs> afterwards so that they but I find nothing wrong with it it's like why do you have to memorize some shit that you could just look at you know yeah, like he googled just... his water bottle right in front of the world <laughs> and left left the screen open and so what do you think as a goalkeeper? Yeah, that's, that's just called doing your homework. Um, <laughs> I remember like when I've been coaching before, I remember I went to my, my team, we, we, we were in the cup and we knew we were going to play one of two other teams because um, mm-hmm. their game was being played after us. So I drove to that game and I watched the game um, mm. and it went, it went to a penalty shootout. It went to a penalty mm. shootout. So I stood there, I stood there with my phone and I videoed the whole penalty shootout. Oh, um, sure. And then... That's one you, of the team. Who do you won. work for? Leeds? <laughs> well, no, I was just there at the game. I can do that. It's it's nothing yeah. against the rules. Um, but then obviously the team I was watching, they got through. Um, we played them two weeks later in the cup. Um, and our game against them went to a penalty shootout. And after the full time whistle went after extra time, I got the goalkeeper over and I got my phone out and I'd already clipped all the penalties for their just their players. And I just mm-hmm. said, Here, watch these. This is where they're all going. And the keeper saved three penalties in that shootout. We went through. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. So did you win the, the? Did you win the final? No, we got knocked out in the next round. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> we played a team like three leagues above us in the next round, so it was tough. Oh, but, okay. Um, but no, that's like it's just it's just the value of doing your homework and uh, like there's been that done before. I remember years ago it was um, Jens Lehmann in goal for Germany at the 2006 World Cup in Germany. They played mm-hmm. Argentina in uh, in a knockout game. And on his water bottle before the shootout, he had, I think it was his water bottle, or he, he might have even had a note in his sock or something. Mm-hmm. Um, there, were, there was something there with, with how he looked at that. And yeah, people have been doing that for a while. I think it's fully legit. Um, it's just called doing your homework because if you're a player... Uh, like if you're if you're a player who takes penalties, I would assume that my penalties have been studied and that I might right. have to do something different. Um, mm-hmm. 
and that's yeah that's what you got to do that's all part of the mind games of it it's uh yeah it's it's part and parcel you know what this does this is not only just doing your homework but it's also showing your work to the world of the homework but now Mm. every time there's a penalty and a goalkeeper goes to drink from his water bottle it that's gonna play (laughs) on the mind of the penalty taker because they're like is this motherfucker really drinking water or are they looking at my penalty stats and i think over time penalties back in the day penalties used to be automatic but now i feel like this is an unofficial stat but i feel like it's penalties it's harder to score them they still score them more than they miss or they get saved but i just feel like it's harder to score because of stat keeping like this but now that you know (laughs) Like if I'm a goalkeeper, I'm walking to the water bottle and looking at it and then looking at the penalty taker and I'm going to fuck with his head. I'm like, All right, I got you. And, and, and it's like, you know, are people going to have to make adjustments and yeah. take on more uncomfortable penalties in the future? Yeah, I think so. Like you saw Salah today, he put his down the middle. Oh, not today, sorry, yesterday against Fulham. But there's the Jens Lehmann one. He had a bit of paper in his sock Mm-hmm. they've actually got the bit of paper and it's got where all the Argentina players put their penalties. He saved two in that shootout. Mm-hmm. Um, but he just had it under his shin pad. <laughs> yeah. Like I've seen people do it before, but it's been a minute and then the, that water bottle thing just like right there. And I, after yeah. I saw him go drink it, it's just like, but it even jarred like people who have played the game before and they were like, this should be illegal. But nah, that's, that's homework, like you said. You just don't want to see the how they did the trick. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't believe in straight down the middle penalties anyway. For some reason. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I, don't, I don't mind them. But I mean, I mean, I hate to bring it back to that game, but that McAllister penalty, even if De Gea knew where he was putting that penalty, I don't think he's saving that. Um, yeah. that was a, a real a real class penalty just to put it somewhere where keeper ain't going to get it yeah unfortunately Jesus Christ <laughs> I was like praying for a miss and uh, that shit was dead on he's playing uh, like he owes he's playing like he owes Brighton because he knows he's going in the summer <laughs> um, <laughs> like he was trying his hardest you saw that shot that De Gea saved from him from the edge of the box yeah, yeah. Uh, in the game as well. Like he was trying, he was trying his best to score a goal and then he didn't fuck around with that penalty. Right. Yeah, you it, man. Like, we're definitely going to have to get better at some things next year. Like, you know, like I said, I didn't see much of the game, but it looks like we had a good first half up there and we do that, but we don't put the ball in the back of the net. And then, you know, when a team like Brighton, they'll make you pay for not scoring. And uh, so there's certain aspects of our game where we definitely need to improve and get better. But yeah, uh, you know, our next game, let's see where our next game is. Who is it against? I think. West Ham away. West Ham. Yeah, and, and that's an away game, but our results away are terrible against top, six or top 18 so West Ham is definitely not in the top of anything they're in the top of the bottom so or so so hopefully we could go to West Ham and like get a result like like come on if we don't get a result of West Ham even though we have other games do we really <laughs> deserve to be in the top four so yeah and then we we normally respond you know so let's, I want to see our boys respond who you got next? You got... We got Forest. But is that this week? Let me see. So you're not playing them this week. Oh, yeah, you are. It's, it, it's, it's on, on it's Monday. Not, it, yeah, it's not until Monday. Yeah, it's until Monday. Right. Brighton and Everton play on Monday, too. Yeah. The one I'm looking at, though, is, uh, is City Leeds. Pep versus Big Sam. The two best managers in the world going head-to-head. <laughs> 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 now what do you think of the hiring of uh, 
Big Sam for just four games for Leeds, which is going to change how Leeds plays completely. Like, why even hire Big Sam? Why don't you tell Javi? <laughs> is it, was it Javier? Javier? Javier Gracia, coach? yeah. Javier Gracia said, hey, play like Big Sam. How tough <laughs> is it for to tell a coach? We know you're coaching it, but we want you to coach this way for the next four games. We want you to circle the wagons and play on the break, the fast break. And it's like, for the next four games, just because we need to stay up. Like, why do you have to fire somebody and pay someone to not, basically not coach, to do the basic <laughs> things of football? Like, what is Sam Allardyce going to bring that Javier couldn't have done if he was commanded <laughs> to do this? Like, it doesn't make I any mean, sense. If he was commanded to do it, I think players would probably sense that his heart's not in that game plan or he might not know how to coach that game plan effectively because it is an art form it is an art form being able to be organized and and do those basics and it's the way you train it and I mean they conceded 18 goals in the last five games like they took some big big beatings like Palace beat them like what 5-1 or something crazy yeah. Liverpool smashed a bunch past them even Bournemouth like stuck four past them at the weekend so um, I can see why they did it. They sat the sporting director as well because he wanted to keep Javi Gracia. So they're like, no, you go too. Um, <laughs> clean sweep. They, 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 they sacked Javi Gracia on his birthday by phone. Uh, they called him up and they were like, happy birthday, please leave. Like, get out yeah. of here. Um, that was pretty cold. But I mean, I, I can see why they've done it because the position they're in, like it's, it's salvageable. They're not down. Um, they just need a short-term fix. Um, and you know they might they might get it they might get it um, I don't know if they will their, their run of games is tough as well they've got City uh, West Ham Tottenham and Newcastle um, I think are their games not in necessarily in that order but that's their four games like that's that's not the easiest run um, Allardyce is a former Newcastle and West Ham manager as well and they've got to play them both so a little bit mm. of spice to those games but He's got some good coaches with him as well. He brought in a guy who has managed like in the lower leagues called Carl Robinson, um, mm -hmm. who he was an actual manager at uh, MK Dons and Oxford. And he's quite a smart manager. He, but he was on Allardyce's coaching staff at Blackburn years ago. Because um, mm -hmm. Allardyce normally has an assistant called Sammy Lee, who's been with him since the Bolton days. Um, mm -hmm. But he couldn't get him in this week because he's on jury duty. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. And and they, they applied um, for the court to to like release him and the judge said no, like you stay and do do jury duty. Um, you, you stay and save this person from going to the same jail that that Leeds is gonna probably end up in. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's in jail to prevent some guy from going to the championship of prisons. He's on oh, jury duty. But, yeah, I did. I did find that funny, but I mean, yeah, I, I can see why Leeds have done it. You know, it's a it's a it's a desperate move, um, mm -hmm. but it's a move nonetheless, and it might shake things up and get because I think they were only going one way under Gracia. They got they had a tough run of games coming up, and they're coming off the back of like a six one loss and a five one loss and a four one loss. Um, you know, confidence is absolutely on the floor, um, playing with no organization, no fight. Um, so, you know, it might, this is, this is like, you know, someone's Chelsea. a little bit, but this is, this is like, this is like someone's dying and Allardyce is like the attempt to like giving them like an adrenaline shot to see right. if you can like start the heart this again. Is, that's what this, this that's is. That's what this is. Fiction. It, yeah. This, this is, is Pulp, pulp fiction. fiction. Yeah. yeah. It might work. It might not. Um, right. but I can see what, I can see why they're trying it um because i think they were dead without it so um maybe it works maybe it doesn't uh maybe they'll be joining us in the championship next season who knows um but it, it's it's a, i don't think i've ever seen a club do it this late um and this this is a crazy season i don't think i've ever seen a season where so many clubs have had three managers yeah they might fire him for the last game and hire a new coach based on <laughs> like you know like just try to get a new coach bounce every game just to stay up <laughs> why don't you just do that Leeds? but the fact that you fired the coach 
you hired in a shorter amount of time than you did the coach you had before shows that you made a mistake because the coach you just fired lasted a shorter time than the one you fired him for and also leads when Jesse Marsh was there didn't give up goals like that they actually had leads which they kind of blew or tied or just got one point and it's like you panicked and you didn't have a plan after you panicked and you just fired the guy whose xg was probably better than Javi's <laughs> and defense was better than Javi's and and then now you're definitely the the thing you feared is about to happen because you panicked Chelsea panicked too you know but Leeds should have been calmer like the, the team was not playing bad the team did not give up they were in all their games with Jesse it was just like just how the ball bounces sometimes like you know you just have to like get past those moments it might be a bunch of games you know but you just can't panic and now panic has got you to Sam Allardyce a bunch of money how much did you hear he's going to get paid for like four games Two and a half million or three million if he keeps if he keeps them up. Well, I know he's gonna work hard because Sam loves money. And if he can just get like he doesn't have to do anything, he doesn't even have to be here next season. Like this is a movie if I've ever seen one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like if he keeps them up, this is a movie script. <laughs> like you know, they just have to put like some type of jeopardy on his character side. Like he has some gambling debts. Somebody's gonna <laughs> has kidnapped his cat and is gonna hang it. <laughs> and he and he needs two million dollars. And he needs a team to win for him to win the two million dollars <laughs> to pay off the gambling debt. So yeah, this is basically a movie script that, that Leeds is living out right now. I mean, Allardyce is a dodgy guy. We found that out when he was England manager. So who yeah. knows? He might he might need that money. <laughs> Yeah, he might need that money. He's that guy. Yeah, this, this is a, definitely a movie. Oh, you know, he's he 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 moves like a gangster as well, Allardyce. I um, mm-hmm. I, I one of my friends, um, was out on holiday uh one time. This was years ago in Spain. I'm mm-hmm. talking about maybe ten years ago, and uh, he was in this small town in Spain, and uh, Allardyce has a or used to have a holiday home there, and he said he, he saw. He said he saw Allardyce um, in a restaurant in town and Allardyce was wearing white linen trousers um, and a white linen shirt that was like open, like unbuttoned, like halfway down with like the hairy chest out, just looking, just looking like a, like a Don. <laughs> Did he have on rings and were people <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I respect that. I respect that. He's uh yeah, he's got he's got a swagger to him. Well, let's see. This swagger is gonna help Leeds. Uh <laughs> I gotta run to the comedy mothership and do a quick spot over there. But before we go, let's shout out Napoli for winning mm-hmm. the scudetto. Like they haven't done that since Maradona. What when when was that? Like the nineties or eighty nine? I think I th- I think I think they won in like 88 and 1990 or something they won mm-hmm. it twice with uh um maradona so yeah they it's been it's been a long time coming it's um you know it's a football crazy city they they love their club um it's just a big thing that yeah the last one the league in 1990 so yeah just looked it up so that's huge for them it's good to see another club win it in italy as well because obviously recently it's been a you know, Inter, Juve, and AC Milan won it uh, once uh, last season as well. So it's and sort of Inter and Juve have been up there as well. So yeah, it's nice to see another club come in and and do that. Um, be interesting to see how much of that Napoli side gets picked apart in the summer. Yeah. Because um, Oss- Osimhen's going to be in big demand. Um, I know a bunch of Premier League clubs will look at him. Um, mm-hmm. P- PSG might have a look if they have to sell all their forwards because the fans are protesting outside their houses and shit. Um, <laughs> Messi and, and, and Neymar. Um, so who knows? PSG might be in the, in the market for a forward. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of that? The people protesting outside of... I, listen, I love football. Like right now, 
it's like, hey, hey, fans, go to work. You got kids to feed. <laughs> you got family. Like, there's people in France marching because they raised the retirement age. Yeah, yeah. You're protesting outside outside of a football player's house because the Heat almost gave you what you wanted. Like Neymar <laughs> did go to the Champions League final. He has won you multiple. Uh, uh, league is a league one title yeah, yeah. and and copers and you're like just like want him to boy this contract and leave your <laughs> goddamn babies you ultra you 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 overpowered ultras go to work and make some money to like in the same country you're fighting for the wage rate to go like like I'm on your side for the age for the wait for the retirement age but you 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 pulling me off your side now when some of the same people probably I can't confirm are like outside of a football <laughs> player's house. You know, you think you think Neymar didn't want to win these things for you? <laughs> I've seen him try. I've seen him win these same things for other teams. He's mm. one of the best players you've ever had ever. Like this is sometimes football players, team uh, fans get it right, and then sometimes they're just too spoiled. You know. Yeah. I mean, as a Southampton fan, I would love PSG's problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if, anyone, if anyone should be going and, and doorstepping players, it should be us. Not PSG. <laughs> like, oh, no, we're not winning the league as easily this season. Oh, no, we went out of the Champions League in the, in the knockout mm-hmm. rounds. Like, come on. Like, get a grip. Um... <laughs> Is fan power getting out of control? Like in football, period. Um, I mean, it's always been a bit crazy in Europe. Um, mm-hmm. Fans over there have a bit more sort of boldness to them than than fans in this country. Um, mm-hmm. Like fans in England are passionate in a different way, um, mm-hmm. whereas fans out there are, are a bit crazier. Um, like you know, I mean, there's that video we watched uh, earlier of uh, of the whole town of Naples just right. shooting fireworks into the sky because they won the league, and it was like bigger than a New Year's Eve celebration. Yeah, it was um, bigger than the, the uh, um, uh, July Fourth, which yeah. is the independence of a country. <laughs> yeah, and that's just yeah, it's just it's just on a on a on a different like crazy fanatic level. Um, so yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the power still lies with the clubs. They they can choose to ignore that shit or or act on it. Um, I think changes would happen at PSG even if they weren't going to do that anyway. Um, mm-hmm kind of feels like some of those players have come to the end of their cycle there yeah yeah so see, yeah but see, but, but to, like i'm sure neymar has brought each of them some joy so uh, to go to his house and be like get out now we're done with you <laughs> is like nobody protesting outside his house would like their job to do that to them <laughs> after they gave something it might not have been everything that you wanted but they gave something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, that um, PSG game I went to watch early in the season against Marseille, mm-hmm. like that was their, their big derby. They won 1 0 and Neymar scored the winner. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, he's still doing something. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like, you know, it's not Neymar's fault. They stuck the World Cup in the middle of the season in December and threw off. The, you know, like the whole vibe of the team, like, you know, like all the players, the three players that they're angry at, you know, two or two of them, they, they went far. One went to the finals and it's just a lot. It's just a lot, man. And you get injured and, he, and he's injured. He, isn't he injured? <laughs> you think he doesn't want to not play? I don't, I know yeah. Neymar's no saint, but come on, man. <laughs> like we didn't do that to Pogba. So, and we paid a lot of money for him. And you won some titles. Bob didn't, we, you know, we, we won some titles, but they, they're completely ignored by the United <laughs> fan base. So, yeah. So, all right, man, I'm going to go do a show at the Comedy Mothership and then go to one at the Sunset Strip, partly owned by Red Band on the same block. Nice. Is this, um, is tonight just a, a spot on a show before your? Um, headline shows yeah yeah I mean, it's just a nice. spot yeah yeah you go feel it feel it out 
feel it out, see what it, see what it do. Yeah. Nice. That poster. Okay. As I don't know if people. I'm, I'm sure loads of people have seen it. Who listen? That poster they made for you was pretty cool in the United kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the most yeah. of days, so I like. I like that. That was that was nice. It's very individual, very personal. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 know me. They know they know who they. Book. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta repost it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love I loved it too. Yeah. One of my favorite all time flyers. And it looked like I could really be a player for United. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, hold on, don't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining, man. Uh, good convo again. Uh, everybody be careful out there. Have some fun, live love, and we'll see you this weekend. Good luck with your teams unless they're playing ours. One. <laughs> all right. I'm a, let's see.